What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Dean Runner here, and today I'm giving you guys my first impressions on the Adidas Ultra Boost 19. So that's 14 very enjoyable miles done and dusted in the Adidas Ultra Boost 19. Today I'm going to be going through with you guys my first impressions on this shoe, a very technical, non-technical overview as I always do, how I found the shoe on the run and then of course my thoughts moving forward and how this thing is going to fit into my rotation and I can tell you now it's going to fit in very, very well. So if you're excited for today guys, make sure you give this video a like, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. Without further ado, let's dive in. Okay guys, so just before we jump into the technical, non-technical overview that I will provide, why did we end up with the Adidas Ultra Boost 19? What drew me to this shoe? Well, back in the summer, I made a vow with myself when I started reviewing shoes a little bit more seriously that I would like to try out as many brands as possible and try not to get caught up in the hype when I get a really good shoe. Hoka and New Balance have done some amazing things this year. I was desperate to get some more of them, but Adidas, Reebok and Skechers have been on my hit list to try and with the release of the Ultra Boost 20 last week I figured that now would be a great time to jump back a version while the 19s were on sale at a bargain price, I've got to say a bargain price of £85, insane. Uh, I thought, why not try the Adidas lineup now? And of course, see, is Boost really life? <laughs> it's a saying that I've heard so much and I've been desperate to see if Boost is life. Well, I will answer that question today. Well, I'll do my best to answer that question today. So let's go through the shoe from the heel working down to the front of the foot, the midsole, then to the outsole. And then, of course, I will give you my thoughts on how this thing performed over 14 muddy miles. So this uh, shoe has a 10mm uh, heel to toe drop, I think it's 22mm to 12mm uh, from heel to toe, so it's a 10mm drop and this thing on the upper has, uh, I think they call it prime knit upper, 360 prime knit upper or something like that. And for me personally, I prefer knitted upper shoes, they just mould to my feet a heck of a lot better. Some of the plasticky materials like on the Nike Zoom Fly 3 is something that I don't have a problem with, it fits absolutely fine, but I just get a better lockdown secure feel in the knit here. And I have quite a wide foot and this shoe fitted absolutely perfectly. So that prime knit upper starts all the way from the heel back here. We can see we have the nice heel flare, quite enjoy the heel flare, had that on the New Balance shoes this year. And that's been really nice. And a nice supportive cage around the back of the heel here. We've got these plastic sections here and here, as you can probably see. Uh, and it just keeps the foot secure in the back there. This is still quite thin material and quite a similar padding, again, to what was in the Nike uh, Peg Turbo 2 and the Zoom Fly 3, where we've got little cushions here just below the ankle bone to support and provide a bit more cushion. The rest of it though, however, is quite thin. Moving down the shoe, we then get to uh, the tongue, which isn't a tongue, it is an all-in-one sort of, uh, sort of uh, material here. Very similar again to the Nike Zoom Fly 3, but 
This is much, much better. With the knitted upper, as I said, it just fits better, like a sock-like feeling. Whereas the Zoom Fly 3 was very much more of a wetsuit material, sliding your foot into that, this is like putting your foot into a nice warm sock, and I do like it. It fits well, fits securely. And then, of course, we have this extra, what I would call plastic bit, I don't know what it is, but it is to help secure your foot down in the midsole area. It's just an extra sort of section that they've added in and again it works i feel secure my foot feels good and secure in this um and it feels good it just blends in with the shoe it's not too garish from a design perspective it just works and the laces they're good that's so far so good and again we move down to the toe box area nice and wide toes have room to splay for me and i have a wide foot this is a size uk 13 and a half i'm a size 13 so this fits really really nicely and again the sock like upper Brilliant. Knitted material, breathable, really, really good. And then of course we go on to the Boost midsole. Apparently in the 19, 20% better than the previous Boost version. Don't know what that means. But for me, my first time experiencing the Boost, so I can't compare if it's 20% better or not. But the Boost midsole throughout, and then of course, uh, from what I gather, Adidas used the Continental outsole rubber on quite a few of their shoes. So again, the Continental rubber... Uh, spans the full length of the shoe, which means durability in this thing should be really, really good. Uh, and that's it from a technical perspective. I don't think there's anything more for me to tell you other than how do we get on with it on the run? So this shoe had a bit of a baptism of fire. It came on the Friday and I thought, why not take it out for a long run on the Saturday? And of course, for those of you that are new to the channel, I do like to give my shoes not just the first impressions, but I like to do a speed test, a long run test, and then of course my final thoughts on the shoe and how I really feel after some good miles in it. And of course this is very early days, but we took it straight out on the long run. I did actually aim to try and do a part run, but I got down there just a little bit late. So they ended up checking some marathon pace miles into the long run just to see how this thing felt. I love running a little bit faster in my long runs anyway, and due to being in base building training, uh, most of my work is relatively easy at the moment, but I thought why not pick up the pace and see how this thing handles it. I was on very runnable trails, as you can see, the white is not going to stay white for long and that is very satisfying for me. I'm, I'm not precious about colour or anything like that, the muddier the better, and this thing held up really, really well. The first thing I noticed when I put my foot in, and the beauty of this shoe straight away, is I knew from the second I took my first step how I would be using this shoe moving forward. And I think that's put some question marks over some other shoes that I have reviewed earlier this year. For me personally, I love to get a good feel of a shoe and then know where it's gonna slot into my rotation so I feel comfortable with it and how I'm gonna be able to use it moving forward. And this thing straight away screamed at me, daily trainer, daily running shoe. I could use this thing for anything I wanted to. It's gonna have its strengths, it's gonna have its weaknesses, but this isn't a shoe that I could think, oh, today's an easy day best not use the Ultra Boost, or, oh, it's a speed session, best not use the Ultra Boost, or even, oh, it's a long run day, best not use the Ultra Boost. I think this shoe I could use for absolutely anything. I got 14 miles in it at the end of the day. It felt great. I wanted to keep going. It was soft. It was cushioned. It was responsive. It was everything I wanted in a long run shoe. I picked up the pace. It felt great. And contrary to reports, or I know the shoe is a bit on the heavier side. I don't know the exact weight in a size UK 13 and a half but it felt light on foot, I'm not gonna lie. It feels lighter than a lot of the other shoes that I was running in. It's just a solid all round package and I've got to say, I'm really disappointed that I haven't run in an Adidas pair of shoes sooner. I'm really excited for 2020 to explore more of the Adidas range. But of course, going back to the run itself, just no issues, no hot spots, nothing. It was a comfort from the minute I took the first step to the minute that I finished, and a frustration that I finished because I thought today would have been a great day to take this thing out for a good 20 plus mile run. And I'm certainly gonna be doing that over the next two or three weeks. Gotta take the Peg Turbo 2 out on a plus, uh, 20 plus mile run, and this thing as well. So overall, my thoughts on this thing are for 85 pounds, an absolute bargain. Now, it was quite lucky because I watched Jamie, uh, Jameson Michael, Jamie Review's video of the Ultra Boost 20. I'd already ordered the 19 two days ago, before I saw his review, he reviewed the 20 and he said, great shoe, but there's no reason to upgrade. Go back to the 19 and just grab a bargain. And I'm really glad that I did grab a bargain because this thing is absolutely super. 85 pounds, second cheapest pair of shoes I've bought all year, just behind the new, uh, new Balance Beacon version two. And I've got to say, 
this thing already instantly feels better than the Beacon 2. I warmed into the Beacon, this thing I've warmed to straight away. So, those are my overall waffling thoughts on the Adidas Ultra Boost 19. What a shoe, I'm looking forward to putting more miles into it. But of course, the question goes out to you guys. Have you run in the Adidas Ultra Boost 19? What do you guys think? Do you love the Adidas running shoe series? And if so, in 2020, which models should I try? I saw Kofuzi's video the other day about the four shoes that he reviewed, the Solar Boost, Boston 8, and I can't even remember the other one now, the Ultra Boost. If there's any of those that you would recommend, let me know, and I would love to add them to my hit list for next year. So that's it for today, guys. Make sure you give it a like, even if it's just for the Christmas jumper. Share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and as always, I will see you on the next one. Until then.